My name is Rick Astley and I ought to say in the interests of full disclosure that this isn't the first time I've posted a video regarding this fault. The first one didn't actually have legs. It seemed to work for several months and I thought I would share it with others. But what it did was revitalize a failing switch. But eventually the switch failed altogether. So I had to find another solution which seems to be working very well. And so I am posting a new video here with that new solution. This is a fairly common fault. And in fact, the message center is flashing two different errors. One for the brake lights, or it says rear lights, but it means brake lights here and one for the cruise control and although it would be wrong and foolish to say that only one fault in the vehicle system can cause this problem 90 percent plus of the time it occurs in the one area where both the cruise control and the brake light system come together and that's in the brake switch module this shows the actual fault occurring and I was fortunate in that I had my wife with me. So while I pulled out my cell phone and recorded it, she went to the back of the car. And as I switched on all the lights one by one, she said they were, in, they were all okay, including, importantly, the brake light. Evidently, the message center was wrong. It knew there was something in the brake switch module that wasn't right, but it certainly wasn't the brake switch as that was working properly. Inside the brake switch are two micro switches. When the brake pedal is pressed, both are operated, but one of them closes and causes the brake lights to come on and the other opens and tells the body processor to switch the cruise control off and not to let it come on again until that brake pedal is not pressed down and the driver operates the cruise control from the steering wheel. The problem that occurs with the micro switches inside the brake switch module are largely to do with age, wear and environment. And so in replacing it you could go to eBay and you could get a switch like this. But that would seem counterproductive as it is probably quite old and worn and seen some horrible environment. Alternatively, you could buy a new switch, but currently in 2021 in the United States, these cost upward of $140. And they happen also to be very difficult to change. The problem is all due to something called wetting current. And you can see the definition of that here from Wikipedia. So why is it that the cruise control cancel switch fails and not the brake on off switch? And it's because the cruise control cancel switch carries such low currents that it can easily be interrupted by oxidation that occurs on the contacts. So to prevent that, the contacts are normally plated with a thin layer of a non-oxidizing metal, and that's usually gold. We know what oxidation is. We see it as rust on ferrous metals. We see it as verdigris on copper, bronze, alloys like that, brass included. We also see it even on silver, a noble metal, as a tarnish. And particularly when it's in the presence of fumes that can come from vehicles. So it tends not to be used in cars. So gold is the choice here. The wetting current for gold is effectively zero. However, because it is so very, very expensive, only a very thin layer is used. And it's often measured in like two microns or five tenths of a thousandth of an inch. And that inevitably wears away. And it wears away partly because when the contacts come together, there's a sliding action between them. Indeed, that's often designed in to clean the contacts slightly every time the contacts come together. But that obviously only lasts for so long and wetting current problems ensue. The brake on off switch, on the other hand, carries a much higher current and can be thickly plated with a much less expensive material like nickel or can be unplated without any concern for wetting current issues or wear. So what remedies do we have available to us? Well, we can change the switch and it's probably the right thing to do, but it is a bugger to change. And if you want to know how difficult it is, 
I've included a link to a document from somebody called Flaxter who describes the process and you may choose to do it. You need to be a contortionist and you need to be able to afford it. It's quite expensive. You could buy cheaper used parts but it's not worth the effort because they'll probably fail on you quite soon after all the work you've done. The second thing you can do is try pumping the brake pedal about a hundred times. That tends to clean the contacts and may take the oxidation off. If you do this, I recommend that you either have the ignition off or the vehicle in neutral so that you don't overwork the solenoid. That's the one you hear clonking that allows you to disengage the vehicle from park. This is obviously free, but unfortunately may not be very long lasting. The third remedy that I'm just going to mention here and not describe altogether is adding a wetting capacitor. That's the method I used in the original version of this video. It lasted several months before I decided to share it with others and it lasted a while after too. But I think the contacts in my switch were really too far gone and eventually it failed on me. Now it may last longer on yours or it may not work at all. What it does is use a thing called a capacitor which is a device that holds uh, a charge of electricity and it kind of perks up the switch by breaking through the oxide layer that forms on it and allows conduction of the much lower current afterward. If you want to try adding a wetting capacitor then it's inexpensive, does require some light soldering skills and it does retain the functionality of the old switch if you're nostalgically attached to it. The fourth method which I will describe in detail here is to add a bypass diode. It's very inexpensive, it's long lasting, there's only two wires to connect but there is a con and that is that after the switch off after the key is turned off there is a small current that continues to flow and I'll go into that negative in a bit more detail later. A device which is almost perfect at switching very low currents is a transistor and instead of the diode you can install a transistor. It's a little bit more complicated and it needs three wires instead of two and it does reduce this parasitic current. That's the current that continues to flow after the key is off and it reduces it substantially by about tenfold. However, since there is another method of using a transistor which altogether stops the parasitic current and is described below in six, I'm not going to describe the transistor method in detail here, but again, it will be in the package to which I'll link below. The last method, which I've coloured in red here because I'm going to describe it in detail, is to use an optocoupler bypass. An optocoupler is like an electronic relay. In a relay you have a control, which is the coil, which communicates with the contacts via a magnetic field, so they're wholly electrically isolated. In an optocoupler you have an LED, which is the control, which communicates with a phototransistor which effectively is the switch. So again we're switching with a transistor. This is very exp inexpensive as well. There is no parasitic current after switch off. The old switch can remain in circuit but there are four wires to connect so it does require some skill to put together. Before you decide not to replace the switch and go for an electronic solution there's a couple of considerations. First of all, some things you'll need. Wire, preferably 22 AWG wire, but you can use between 18 and 22 AWG. You'll need two colors for the diode solution and four for the opto coupler solution. And you're only going to need about four or five inches of each. It doesn't matter if they're not the same colors that I use, so long as you make a note of them. One thing you'll probably don't have around is some posi tap wire taps. There are various ways of tapping into a wiring harness, but for this application, I really do recommend the posi tap because you can actually do it with one hand and it's a difficult place to work. Two are needed for the diode solution, four for the optocoupler, and details of those are to follow. Various sizes of heat shrink tubing and a heat gun. Again, presumably you have these around. 
if you don't then you obtain some for this you'll wonder how you did without them you'll be using them all the time a light soldering iron and some wiring tools you don't need very good skills I've been wiring and soldering since I was a kid and I'm still lousy at it so and you'll see that actually in the pictures to follow uh, but we're not soldering copper tubing here so just remember that and the semiconductors you're gonna have to acquire those and we'll talk about that shortly too there are some minor differences between cars of different model years which I'll describe in more detail later but the 1997 through 2002 had a master cruise control switch just behind the J-gate. That was removed from 2003 onward. For those that are interested, I put together circuits, highly simplified, just extracting the circuitry for the cruise control and brake light switches for 97 through 2002 and for 2003 through 2005. I'm not going to spend any more time on that here but it'd be part of the package to which I link below for those who may want to take a more detailed look. This is a simulation of the standard brake switch and cruise control cancel circuit. The main components here are a battery. I'm showing this battery right now at 14 volts because when I'm running the system the alternator will charge the battery and that normal charge voltage is around 14 volts. I have an ignition switch. When the ignition switch closes it operates a lot of things including several ignition relays one of which will pass current through a cruise cancel switch to an engine control module and depending on what voltage that engine control module sees it will allow or not allow the cruise to work. I'm going to close the ignition switch and you see the voltage here jumps to 14 volts and that says we can use the cruise control if we so wish. We have a brake switch and cruise control switch which are mechanically linked. When the pedal is pressed the brake switch closes and the cruise control switch opens. So let's do that. When the brake switch is closed the brake relay closes and allows current to go to the brake lamps and note that now the voltage here has gone to zero volts and that means that the engine control module will not allow the cruise control to work. Open the brake switch which also closes the cruise cancel switch and once again this goes to 14 volts and if necessary the uh, engine control module will allow the cruise to work. However, if this, this switch goes open because it's broken, as it is in the subject of this video, then this goes to zero and no matter what we do to the brake switch, this remains at zero and will not allow the cruise control to work. If we can repair this by changing it, for example, then this goes to 14 volts when the brake is open and it opens only when the brake switch is pressed and goes to zero and disables the cruise control. This is another circuit simulation and by the way you can run these on a web browser so I will put links to them and you can mess with battery voltage and other things work all the switches yourselves if you wish. In this one I have already closed the ignition switch and I'm stealing current to drive the engine control module by putting a diode from the brake switch side to the side where the cruise cancel switch would normally when closed take current from the ignition relay. However here this cruise cancel switch is broken so it doesn't matter whether it's open or closed it doesn't make any difference to the circuit and actually I've cut it out of circuit and I'll explain why in a moment. So this diode, a diode is like a one-way street to electricity is allowing current to flow into the engine control module and producing a voltage across this 2.5 thousand ohm internal resistance of the 
engine control module port uh, at 13 volts so 13 volts is close to the battery voltage of 14 volts and that will allow the cruise control to operate if the driver so wishes however when we close the brake switch you can see this voltage goes down to zero and the engine control module prevents the cruise control from working even if the driver presses the buttons on the on the steering wheel if we open it again we get 13 volts again and that's a sufficient voltage to make the cruise available the, the problem here is that if I open the ignition switch you can see that the current continues to flow into the engine control module that's when the car is switched off in the garage there's still a leakage current of 5.2 milliamps actually not that amount exactly and the reason is that I still have the battery at a 14 volt level which is the level you would see if the car were battery was being charged by an alternator so let's change this to about 12 and a half which is a fully charged battery at rest and just to be tidy we'll change this legend okay so now we actually have 4.6 milliamps flowing because we've got a lower battery voltage but that's close to 5 milliamps 5 thousandths of an amp not very much but it does mean there's a little leakage out of the battery all the time why did I cut this here that's because this ignition relay does a lot more than just to operate this engine control module and I didn't want current leaking back through here to other components that are attached to this ignition relay so I've cut it out of circuit this cruise control cancel switch may be broken but it may also be intermittent so it may work sometimes and not others and if it were to work sometimes again I don't want voltage sorry current from here flowing here and going back through there and why not use a piece of wire rather than a diode make a two-way street here and that's because when the brake switch is closed and the ignition switch is closed I do not want current to be able to flow this way to ground it probably will not cause a problem for the engine control module but I'm not 100% sure so for safety's sake we make this a one-way street so current can only go from left to right and not right from left right to left and flow out of the engine control module to ground via the brake switch and ignition switch all modern cars have a parasitic current after the key off and that's the current that drives things like the keyless entry security systems and keeps some memories alive in a Jaguar XK Jaguar consider 40 milliamps to be a maximum and 30 milliamps to be more typical and the use of a diode to fix this problem of the brake switch does increase that 40 milliamps to 45 or if yours is 30 milliamps to 35 so it's not an insignificant increase besides the normal parasitic current there's also another loss which is that the battery has a leakage internally typically that's about three percent a week and the extra five milliamps that this diode adds to put things in perspective equates to about 0.9 percent a week so it depends really whether or not you think this is sustainable in your vehicle i think that most people who are going to leave a car for two or three months or so would actually try and avoid battery sulfation by keeping the car charged during storage because obviously the alternator is not topping up the battery so a trickle charge maintenance is recommended but not everybody will do it and so maybe then the diode leakage might be excessive for you and this method may not be appropriate the diode I use is called a 1N4001 and you can see it's a 50 volt 1 amp diode and that's more than adequate by several fold for the job it has to do 
but you can also use a 1N4002 through 1N4007 which are pretty much the same, same physical size except they're higher voltage. I chose this because it is very very common and easy to get hold of and it's very inexpensive and here you'll see for less than five dollars you can get a hundred of them and you need one so that may be a bit of a problem if you can get less by all means do so I mean they are useful diodes if you do this sort of thing but uh, really you shouldn't have to buy so many if you're a hoarder it may well be that you have some of these diodes around in an old wall wart those transformers that I guess are called adapters for different appliances now you can't use one of the really modern ones that you can use in Europe Australia the US wherever they're rather fancy inside and use something called switch mode power supplies but the old ones that had just a transformer rectifier diodes which is what we're looking for here and maybe a capacitor would be ideal and if you open them up and see some diodes like those shown here then you can just cut some out unsolder them if you can but they can be cut off because the leads can be soldered even when they're really short and you can maybe get your diodes for absolutely free you're also going to need something to tap into the vehicle wiring and i really like these connectors for connecting into difficult areas. Most taps like Scotch Lock require that you need three hands to do things. With this one you connect onto the wire you're attaching to first and then in another operation you add your tap afterwards and we'll look at how you do that shortly. These pictures show the assembly of the diode and you'll notice in the top and middle pictures on the right hand side of the body of the diode there is a ring that indicates something called the cathode the other end being called the anode and it's important that we identify these and know which wire goes to which I've used a blue wire on the cathode because that happens on my post 2003 vehicle to have to go to a blue wire on the harness and so I've chosen that but if you have a pre-2003 I think that's a purple green we'll look at that again in a moment to be sure and for the other wire I've chosen brown why because I had some brown wire around it well it wasn't important to me as long as I had two colors that I could identify I could make a note of and that I wouldn't get the wrong way around when I assembled them into the vehicle and in the bottom picture you can see I put some heat shrink tubing over the assembly and while it was hot I pinched the end off just to make it neat and make a good closure there because it is so important to get these wires around the right way and because you may not be using the same colors as me please please make a note of which colors go to the cathode and anode or which colors synchronize with my colors so that you don't make a mistake when you install the diode assembly in order to install the diode you're going to have to access the brake and cruise cancel switch connector and you can do that by feeling up high under the brake pedal under the insulation you'll feel this white connector up there you can pull it down you can see there's some black wires going in at one end they go to the switch itself the cruise cancel part of which is now defunct and inoperative and the other end with the colored wires goes to the wiring harness of the vehicle so we're going to have to cut one of these wires in the one of the two middle wires it doesn't matter which those black wires that go to the cruise cancel switch part of the assembly you'll find it easier to actually do everything here if you can release the two parts of the connector and you do that by pressing down the release tab at the far end and in that cavity close to the other arrow at the end where the black wires go in. This diagram is rather like a subway map. It's not especially representative of the real thing, but it does allow you to see where you need to go. So you can see that I've put the diode under some clear heat shrink tubing here so you can see inside and the cathode ring can clearly be seen. And that goes to the second wire in from the right. Now, why is it on the right because I have a latch 
you can see press to separate connectors pointed to on that latch away from me and on the 2003 on the blue wire is very recognizable because it's the only solid wire and another way of looking at it is that the two wires to the left are both white with a blue stripe but it's the other end where we have a blue wire or in pre-2003 a purple green wire that we connect the cathode to and the outside one adjacent to it has the other wire that goes to the anode. The other thing we have to do here is break the faulty switch out of the circuit as it can interfere with the operation of the diode. And if you ever decide that you're going to change the switch altogether, you're going to throw this piece away anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now you can break either of those two inner wires, those two black wires, it doesn't matter. I have chopped a little bit out, not just cut it, and I put yellow heat shrink tubing, in this case it doesn't have to be yellow of course, over the ends just to cap them off and make sure that the internal wires don't touch anything. The next thing we're going to have to do is connect our device to the vehicle wiring and that is what we need the posi taps for. These pictures come from the posi tap website and show how to do it. The four frame pictures show how to attach the posi tap to the vehicle wiring that we're going to tap into. Note that they are different colors. They color code the devices depending on size, but the principle is the same. But yours will be red and gray. So the first process is clearly shown here. The second process, which is attaching your wires from the diode, I've changed somewhat in this. Positap recommend, and I'm referring to the blue connector in the bottom right, that you undo the nut on the right all the way off thread it down the wire then push the wire into the main body and then slide the nut up and screw it into the back while pushing the wire in all the time you kind of do that with your little finger and palm while using your index finger and thumb to screw the thing up i don't like that method and i found it very frustrating i kept losing the nut down the wire so what i prefer to do is unscrew the nut nearly all the way and then push the wire in making sure there's no errant strands sticking out so make sure the wires are neat and tidy before you try poking them in poke them in the back and then again still applying pressure screw the nut up here i've cut the old switch out of circuit by cutting one of the middle two wires on the switch side of the connector that's the black wires and i've capped off the ends of the cut ends with yellow heat shrink here on the vehicle harness side i've connected the two posi taps and you can see that i've done that to the right of the connector when the latch lever is toward you in the case of my 2003 that's to the blue wire and that will be purple green on a pre-2003 car and to the wire adjacent to that on the outside which is an orange wire with a green tracer on all model years these operations the cutting of the wires on the brake switch side and attachment of the posi taps to the harness side are much more easily done if the connectors are undone after that, it's a matter of connecting the diode into the posi taps. It's easy on my car because I have a blue wire from the diode going to a posi tap, which goes to a blue wire on the vehicle harness. And the other wire then just goes to the other posi tap. After that, I put the connectors together and tuck them up under the insulation where the connector originally came from but before doing that unlike a carpenter who's always told measure twice and cut once because he only has one chance at it you do have another chance to check that you do have things the right way around so check which wires go to what in your notes from when you soldered the diode and then check that those correct wires are going to the right wires in the harness as you saw the diode was very easy to assemble and to install but it does have that disadvantage that the previously isolated 
brake light and cruise control parts of the circuitry are now joined by the diode. Current flows from one side to the other. That does also result in a leakage current. It's minuscule, but it's still there after the ignition is switched off. That's not the case if we use an opto isolator. Electric current does not cross from the previously isolated brake circuit to cruise control circuit. The connection between the two is made by light here. The connection between the two was originally made by a mechanical connection where the brake, uh, where the brake pedal depressed two independent switches, but one of those has failed and we can cut it out of the circuit as we did with the diode. In the opto circuit, we don't need to cut it out at all. It doesn't make any difference one way or the other, whether it goes in or it goes out. If it's intermittent, we can leave that connected. So you may want to consider the opto circuit after seeing that it is rather harder to put together than the diode. Let's then look at the simulation of the opto coupler circuit. In this simulation, we've added something called an opto coupler. That's a small integrated circuit, one with just four pins, and it's rather like a relay. A relay has a coil that controls a switch via a magnetic field. So these two things, the coil and the switch, could be on absolutely different electrical circuits, and the electrical circuits would not connect together because there's only a magnetic field that joins them. And the optocoupler is similar, but here we have an LED that shines a light beam onto a switch, which actually is a transistor. And a transistor is an ideal thing, much better than this switch, for passing very low currents, as we do to this engine control module. I have the cruise control cancel switch closed, as it would normally be, and the brake switch open. And as we remember, these two are mechanically linked. When this closes, this opens. When this opens, this closes. However, this one is broken and open. So let's close the ignition switch. And current starts to flow and we get a voltage here very close to the charging voltage of this battery, which is 14 volts. We get 13.9. And so the engine control module says this can work. The cruise control is available but if we hit the brake this goes down to a very low voltage here it says 24.2 millionths of a volt effectively zero and so the engine control module will switch off the cruise control and will not allow it to operate so long as this brake switch is closed again we can open the brake switch we go back to 13.9 volts the cruise con cancel switch was chopped out of circuit with the diode circuit because I had an electrical connection between these two sides and I was afraid of current should this close getting back to other things that are hanging on this ignition relay. But here there is no electrical connection from here to here, just a light connection. So it doesn't matter whether this is open and closed and we don't have to cut it out of circuit. So again, close the switch. This goes down to a very low voltage cruise control is unavailable, open it, this goes back up to a voltage, close to battery voltage, cruise control becomes available, switch the ignition off, here we go, come on, and it goes down, it says actually to zero picovolts, so picovolts is one millionth of a millionth of a volt, so actually zero. Unlike the case of the diode, it's very unlikely you'll find anything around that you can cannibalize to get an opto isolator that's usable in this circuit. So you're going to have to buy them. And again, they're extremely inexpensive here. Six dollars buys a hundred of them and you probably will not find an application for any of the remaining 99. So buy the minimum you can and pay the least you can for it. So you can see the opto isolator in close up here. One of the things we're going to do before we assemble it is flatten out those leads and that makes them easier to solder. These are designed here to go through holes in a printed circuit board and we don't have one of those. 
We need a resistor to limit the current through the LED and the choice here is a 1.5 thousand ohms or K ohm quarter watt resistor and again it's extremely inexpensive so buy the least you can for the least money you can. Right I said I was bad at soldering and this proves it. What we have here is the integrated circuit top up with the legs flattened out and you can see I've attached the resistor to pin one that's the one with the dot identifier on it and then I connected a red wire to the other end of that resistor to pin two which is on the bottom left in each of the pictures I've attached a black wire to pin four I've connected a yellow wire and to pin three a blue wire and then I've covered everything I could in heat shrink tubing in order to keep things apart and have no shorts and then I've covered the whole assembly in a single piece of heat shrink tubing and pinched the end off. In the event that your wire colors are different from mine and they probably will be as I did with the diode I'm suggesting that you take a picture of your assembly first and make a note of your wire colors compared with mine so that when we put this into the vehicle you can translate my colors to your colors. Here we have our subway map, our simplified diagram on how to install the optocoupler onto the harness of the vehicle. One of our keys here is the lever that you press in order to separate the connectors and that's arrowed here. And please note that faces away from us in this diagram. That may seem a strange thing to do but that makes it consistent with the original drawings in the workshop manual from Jaguar. And that kind of tells you which side of the connector you're looking at, especially if you've got a pre-2003 vehicle where you don't have that solid blue, which is a good indicator of where you are. That's purple-green, of course, before then. So you put each of these wires into the right place, according to this diagram, and then you check it, and then you check it again, because there are four wires here, unlike the diode, which only had two, so... You, do, you have more chances to get things wrong in this application. I described the last diagram as being rather like a subway map, straight lines and regular angles that help you find your way from one place to another, where in fact the actual thing is quite different. Here we have the Berlin subway, for example, in schematic and its actual layout. So indeed our optocoupler assembly isn't going to look quite like the schematic. Don't worry about that. Mine doesn't and neither will yours. Here is my optocoupler assembly joined into the wiring harness and so again we have to check that we have all the wires going to the correct places and once we have that all we have to do is put the two connectors together because again it's easier to do if you separate them before trying to attach the posi taps and the wires from the assembly into the posi taps so we have to connect them back together and then just stow them back along with the connectors into the original position behind the insulation up high under the brake pedal. Whether you change the brake switch wholly, use the diode or use an optocoupler, you'll want to test the system. I used both the diode and the optocoupler and in both cases the cruise control was fully functional and the error message went away. I'm sorry that this video was taken on a sunny day so you can hardly see the message center and you can see all the dust inside the cowl of my uh, speedometer. But in this loop I initiated the cruise control, I accelerated, I deaccelerated, de I cancelled via the brake switch, I cancelled via the button on the steering wheel and I resumed using the button on the steering wheel and in every case the cruise control functioned just as it should. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you had the cruise not available check rear lights error, then I hope at minimum this helped you diagnose the problem if you chose to change the switch, or I hope it helps you save some money and a lot of effort if you chose to use the diode or the optocoupler. Below this video will be a link to a complete package of the, these slides and some extras together with links to the animations of how each circuit works. So you'll be able to play with those. You can change values, switch switches, do whatever you like. So thanks again.
Bye-bye.